Hello viewers, SuperGT here. Welcome back to Sardinia for about the 8 billionth time this week. We've done so many laps around here, but we can do a couple more because these races were very good. Very, very good races indeed. And this combination has thrown up some really, really good battling uh, this week. So 15 laps, Sardinia B, Group 3. The tyre wear and the fuel use is such that it makes it a very tactical race as you have to kind of stretch out the entire race on one tank of fuel and one set of tyres. You can obviously go into the pit lane if you want, but typically that is the slower strategy. And so this race turned out to be a very strategic one and one that I actually really relished, one that I really enjoyed taking part in. So first off, let's, let's go through how this race kind of begins. So to begin with, I'm, I'm driving the AMG Mercedes, which turns out to be a good car for fuel. You need good cars on fuel for this race. Uh, the guy there, the Finnish guy in the Lexus, another good car. The guy in the lead in the 911, which I think is the best car. As he goes flying on, I was really caught off guard with that. I'm not sure what exactly his mind was occupied by but his car was occupied by the barrier very soon after that. So, moving up into second, 1.2 seconds away from the lead, as the, the leader goes wide, and that's quite crucial here, as he was one and a quarter seconds ahead. Now, we all know the magical suck zone of eight tenths. I just get within that, and he's trying to shake me off, but I'm following him exactly. And this is a crucial element of this race, slipstream. This is something that you could say I was abusing, but it's there to be used. It's there to be used, the slipstream. You're, sa you're trying to save as much fuel as you can, basically. You do need to save fuel. You can't go out and full out attack on this race. If you go full out attack, you will have to pit. So ideally, you need to be um, short shifting in slipstream. It's easier to do that. You can go a little bit quicker and fuel save a little bit easier. And then the third method of fuel saving in this race is lifting and coasting so going into the fast corners sorry going into the very slow corners from fast speeds like this corner here we're lifting off the throttle for like half a second and then putting the brakes on so you just you're basically off the throttle at a high speed obviously you're using more fuel at higher speeds and um, just half a second here half a second there it adds up to quite a lot of seconds and over the course of the race you might save say 10 seconds worth of full throttle and that's quite a lot of fuel ultimately so you're just trying to add a combination of all of these strategies together in terms of fuel saving and you should be able to get to the end so here coming down the main straight see the bottom right of the screen going into the leaner settings so i'm in the slipstream and i'm keeping up so he might be doing the same thing with the lean settings as well and then to turn one off the throttle really early pretty much at the 150 board and then breaking at 100 so for 50 meters we're coasting and not using any fuel and uh, coming out of the final turn, lap number four, he's going to try again to break the toe, but I'm just I'm alert to it. I'm just really reacting very quickly to him. You see just how much I'm gaining by doing it. So you really do have to make the most of the slipstream. And it's up to you to make a decision. Let's say you're one second behind, so you're just outside of the slipstream. You kind of have to make the decision. Do I need to push and to get into that slipstream, or do I just kind of wait? I would say probably best to push in that if you're that close. A little bit later in the race, lap number seven now. And uh, we've got a nice gap to the guys behind. So just really playing the long game. If I had to summarise this race in two words, I would say consistency and patience. As uh, It can be very tempting, and I see it quite a lot. A lot of people going fast very early, and then they have to go very, very slow at the end as they've used too much fuel. So it goes quite slow here. So I'm going to go up the inside into the lead. It's quite good to sit in second behind someone else and let them do the work. But I can just sit in the lead and I can dictate the pace of the race now. So I can just put it in lean setting two. If he wants to overtake me, fair enough, I'll let him go back past. But I can just kind of sit here, go really slowly. Well, not really slowly, but slower than normal, slower than flat out pace. And just hit a decent speed, lapping consistently in the mid 21s at the moment. 21.4, 21.4, 21.5, 21.5, 21.6, the last six laps, or 
last five laps. Uh, let's see what this lap's going to be. Should be a little bit different, uh, given that we had to go for an overtaking manoeuvre. And we are in the leaner setting. You see him right behind us here. The, this kind of tells you their intention. He, he's going to bump draft me, so he doesn't really want to hang around. If you wanted to go past, it could have easily have done that. So that does tell you what your opponent's intentions are, at least at this point of the race. You don't know when he wants to overtake. But for now, he's quite happy to sit behind. Uh, later on, lap number eight, so one lap later, going through the final corner. And we just run slightly wide. You do need to keep two wheels on that curve at all times. And I get half a second penalty. So I wasn't lean setting six, but I'm going to put it down to one. So it's important here that with that penalty, that you need to kind of uh, maintain a decent gap. So I'm half a second ahead at this point. And this is where the penalty zone is. At this point here, I'm about a second ahead. And that is going to be enough to keep the position, see the gap as we look behind. And as we serve the penalty, we stay ahead. So if you do get a penalty, you need to try to maintain a gap if possible. So that when you serve the penalty, you're still in a good position. And that has worked out on this occasion is the final sequence again let's try to get it right this time there we go you can just run two wheels on the grass but you don't want to really go too much further than that so again he's right on our tail as we come across the line to end lap number nine so the way i'm measuring the fuel you do really need to keep an eye on the fuel and i'm measuring it every lap so essentially you can just divide 100 100 by the amount of laps which is 15 and that comes out to about 6.7 cent per lap so that's kind of the barometer so basically how I measured it is every three laps you need to use 20% and then in total 15 laps would be 100% so you used all your tanks so after lap 9 I should have used 60% so I should be on 40 and I was so I'm on target at least I know that I'm on target to get to the end so the guy behind th this is the big benefit of being in the lead the guy behind kind of just got hemmed in i think a little bit on the exit just went a little bit too wide onto the gravel and that puts him down into third place we're going to take a quick look behind you see him just dropped right off we do have a replacement battler though in jeb matthew who is going to take over the battling but we are over a second ahead of him so we're going to try to keep out of that slipstream range so again another tactical element of this race the slipstream really important as um, if someone's in your slipstream you're helping them basically you're helping them preserve tires preserve fuel they can go a little bit quicker throughout, throughout the entire lap but in the end it was actually a safe race we finished five seconds ahead I think uh, Matthew had to save a lot more fuel at the end and we come across the line with zero percent fuel 0.0, .0 laps remaining so really keeping an eye on that and a good total time of 20 minutes and 32 seconds there are final results it wasn't quite the quickest lap but we did manage to beat quite a handful of Porsche 911s which I think is going to be the go-to car for this race so there we go my 115th win on this game on this account at least I think I've got about 49 or something on R4M Shadow GT so quite a few cars you can use for this the 911 is a very good choice the Lexus is a good choice the R8 is not too bad it's not the greatest it is a very quick car for qualifying it's probably the best qualifying car but um, that of course without fuel loads or tires to worry about in the race you do have to worry about that uh, which makes the r8 not quite as good so uh, we go for the second race here and it's a similar uh, look about it we're in fourth instead of third we still have the finish guy and the guy in, in pole position same people we have the extra person here in the German in second place he's gone for the Audi R8 so four different cars in the top four and then we have Ghost just behind us in fifth the person you want to watch out for you might just see his name on the left hand side and throughout the race he's not quite there just yet he started in 19th he's called Fist the Rainboat very weird name but just look out for his name on the left hand side of the screen as he's going to slowly make his way through the order so at this point here, again, just settling into the race, um, just trying to not lose too much time. I, I had this in my live stream earlier in the, in the week, people just doing loads of stupid fighting on the first lap and then losing the slipstream and then losing, let's say, like two or three seconds on the first lap because of stupid fighting. It's best just to settle in 
and just get on with the race and minimise your time loss. Don't lose time at all. Just try to minimise fighting. You don't want to fight at all, really. You just want to settle into the race, kind of get on with it. And of course, uh, qualifying highly does help with that, uh, as it always does. So make believe not with the quickest lap here. He's in the Ford GT. I'm not sure how good that is on fuel. I'm not imagining that is great. But we've already dropped off the, the leading uh, duo. You see them battling there two seconds ahead of us. As um, We now need to make that decision. Do I need to really push, uh, use up a lot of fuel to try to catch up with them and get in their slipstream where I can then save some more back? Or do I kind of just sit here and hope that they're using too much and they'll have to save a little bit at the end. It's kind of a, a hard decision you have to make. But for now I'm kind of content with just sitting here and managing the gap and just seeing how the race plays out. So for now, just making sure that I don't drop too far behind. I'm two seconds behind at this point. But you just make sure that I'm not going to drop down too much. They were battling quite intently. So all the time whilst trying to drive my own car, I was trying to watch that battle. I could see that the Audi R8 who's now in the lead, was actually quite intent on defending his position, which is fair, which is, you know, he's fair and he's allowed to do that, but it's just going to lose him time. It's just going to bring me closer and everyone else closer to that battle. So, uh, as we've just said, minimising time loss is so important. So if you, if you just want to keep fighting each other, you're just going to lose loads of time and it's kind of pointless, really. So you see there, they go defensive. They're losing loads of time. I'm going to catch up quite a lot. And then through the turn, the German just bundles bundles him off, bundles the Porsche off, gets himself a five second penalty. So now I'm in a really good position because they, they were just fighting so stupidly. It was just such a stupid fight to be in. They just really didn't have to do it. Um, this is why I was quite happy to sit in second. If someone wants to overtake me, I'll just let them go and I'll sit behind them. And then that means that the people behind, they won't be licking their lips basically because if I'm in third and I see the top two fighting, I'm just like, yeah keep fighting guys keep whacking each other off and I'll catch up and then I'll probably beat you but um, if the two people ahead are working together it's kind of frustrating in third place because you, you're not really catching up if they're working together this guy goes a little bit wide here I'm trying to get ahead of him before he serves his penalty he's got a five second penalty so I'm hoping to the lead of the race so that was a good lap for me I was patient first five laps not really much happening just slowly trying to make my way back onto the leading pair and then they just go and wipe, wipe each other out in a stupid crash and we've moved up into the lead. The race is certainly not over although I would say that um, it's going to be hard for those two who were leading to try to challenge so we'll see how that one goes. So sitting in the lead he's kind of come back at me here he has got the penalty so there's not much point in fighting too much I'm still going to try and cover the inside but I'm not going to run him wide on the exit just see him on the left hand side it's always good to have the radar on. It's quite a hard race to have the radar on because you're measuring the fuel so much. You kind of need the fuel and the radar, if anything. Uh, so you need to kind of memorize how many flicks of the switch you need to, to make to, to swap from the radar to the fuel and keep switching back between the two of them to keep checking on both, just in case you need both, or you do need both, really. So end of lap six, good position. So the race has gone well so far. Let's see how the Lexus holds up from here to the end. We're under attack from the Porsche. And again, we know that that is probably the best car for this race overall. Going to turn one, and we both kind of lifting coast, so I'm kind of seeing the intention of the other guy as we go around the inside. And that's a good defense. Just keep to the left-hand side as much as possible. And then you can see on the radar, you can just kind of watch the radar. You don't even have to look behind all work, uh, always. And then you see once they've gone to the outside, then you can move over a little bit obviously leave, leave them the racing room but then you can kind of defend that way just keep them to the outside and then just make sure you hit your apex and then they can't get the cut back on you so lap number seven we're almost halfway into the race as we come down the hill the Porsche is going to go to the left hand side kind of similar to the last lap I can kind of defend this one up the inside still I'm going to have to leave him the room as he's still there on my left hand side not, not sure exactly where he is he is just on my left hand side, he was in my kind of blind spot there with both cameras not quite able to capture exactly where he was. Did ideally need the radar there, but um, didn't, couldn't quite get it in time. But still, down to second, I'm quite, I'm quite happy to sit here in second. It doesn't bother me too much. So um, we, we're just going to sit here, save a bit of fuel, and ideally, an ideal situation is to try to build up a surplus of fuel so that on the last uh, let's say two laps you can actually really attack on 
the revving, you can just over rev the car, and you, you get more speed out of the car. Now this guy's coming through, um, I just kind of noted his position on the thing on the left hand side of the screen, and he came through from the lower order of the top eight, and he's, he's really attacking, and it kind of tells me that he's not actually... Uh, he's not actually going to do a no stop because he's just, he's just using too much fuel to get this fast up the up the order. So even though it looks like a threat, this guy, the Spaniard and the Audi, he's not really a threat because I'm pretty sure he's going to have to pit. He's driving very aggressively, um, must be revving that car out and there's no way he can actually go to the end on that much aggression. So a lap later, end of lap number nine, I was a bit worried because normally people go in the end of lap eight. But here he does pull over to the right-hand side, and we correctly predicted that he wasn't actually a real threat in this race, so we didn't actually have to worry about him. The main threat is from Ghost, and you see on the left-hand side of the screen now, Fist the Rainbow, up to fifth. Now he's slowly coming through the order, and this is kind of the kind of thing you kind of have to pay attention to, kind of, as I say that about eight times in a row. And Sometimes you kind of get blindsided by someone who's just really quick who come through from the back and it can happen it does happen quite a lot actually people just don't qualify but they're very quick and they can uh, catch up quite quick uh, quickly so lap number 10 that's a uh, that's two-thirds of the race done this point here serving the penalty again once you get the penalty you really have to put uh, a lot of attacking in for that lap to, just to give you a good position for um, once you've served your penalty so now, Fist is right behind us as uh, we enter the last couple of laps of the race. Four laps to go, 28% of fuel as we come up to the line to begin lap number 12. Now we're going to skip a lap here. Now this is where things get really interesting because we're within a second of each other here. One, two and three. And with three laps to go, I, I kind of want to, I want to hit the front, I want to get to the front of the race. And control the race as I'd rather go to first than get overtaken by the guy in third. You don't really want to drop down too many positions at this point of the race. So I felt as though so let's attack, let's control the race from the front at least for three laps. You can defend, you can defend for three laps, but you can't really defend for like five, six, seven laps. It just gets a little bit too long. People get a little bit too angry, and uh, the, the chances of a punt uh, get greatly increased the longer you start defending but I think once you enter the last sort of 20% of the race which we are into here it becomes okay so you see they're moving to the right hand side I can just I'm just kind of half watching the radar I'm watching the radar more than I'm actually watching the track I can actually see where he is without actually looking where he is just cover the inside here I know they're looking for the cutback here so take a really narrow line you see just how narrow I go on the way out so if people go wide on the way into that left hander they're looking for the cutback so I just blocked it off. There's no way through. And the main threat on this on this lap, this is probably the hardest place to defend. The main straight going into turn one, because it is a long straight. The slipstream does work here very well. As now Fist is into second. He's got through past Ghost as well. So he's done a really good job. He started 19th, which is last. Where well, it was near enough last at the start of the race. Into turn one. I've got the inside line, but he is ahead. And he is ahead quite convincingly. There's no way I could have really braked so late and forced him wide. So I really need to go for an instant reply here. Two laps to go, or less than two laps to go. I need to get back ahead of him, get into that slipstream, and see if I can just get uh, get the space, get the manoeuvre done, hopefully, into the next corner coming up after this one. I'd say the right hand at the end of this uh, little mini straight in the centre of the circuit. It's a very good overtaking opportunity. And then, of course you have turn one after the main straight. So not quite able to get onto the back of him here. He had really good, it looked like he had really good rear tyres. As um, it kind of shows you now, the tyres do matter. So if you have better rear tyre life, you can actually get off the turns a lot better. You can accelerate a lot better. You see just how good he is accelerating through that turn. There's just nothing I can do about keeping up with him. As now I think, um, I'm out, out of the slipstream range. The focus kind of has to has to turn. You have to admit defeat almost in some senses. I'm still going to try and catch up with him. We kind of have to switch your focus because now he is a long way ahead with only one lap to go. And I have close attention to Ghost. 
as we go into turn one, fully defensive. Into the corner we go, again, just hit my breaking point, hit the apex, there's nothing you can do about that. So good defending into turn one, and it's definitely going to be a defensive race from here to the end. Let's fist the rainbow, I must say. Absolutely incredible drive to come through from the back to the front with just two laps to go. And I've just got no reply for that pace. He's just driving so well with uh, with that 9.11. He's got it absolutely planted. Looks like I'm going to have to watch the replay, I think, and just kind of analyse how he's done it in terms of the fuel, in terms of the tyres. How's he driving? Where's he shifting? Uh, is he short shifting? Is he uh, lifting and coasting? Into this turn, you can see they're semi-defensive again, keeping the position up the hill. Only a couple of corners left to go. He's right on that out here, defensive into this one. I'm going to have to go narrow again on the exit, just to make sure he doesn't go up the inside. With two corners to go, am I going to be able to keep this position? It's going to be very, very close up to the line. I'm not sure exactly how much fuel I've got either. 1%, 0.2 laps remaining. It's going to be very, very close. It's going to be very marginal. As we come out of the final turn, he's right on our tail. We go to 0% fuel. As we come up to the finish line, he's alongside us. And it's going to be such a close finish. But we just keep second by 0. Point something very small amount. <laughs> and uh, a very, very close finish. Uh, Fist the Rainbow there with a 20 minute 35 finishing time. And I was a couple of seconds later, so 20 minutes 38 roughly, or 37. And so I was a good couple of seconds off of my AMG overall time. So I would have won that race there if I had done the AMG time in the first race. But ultimately, it was, a, it was a brilliant drive to come through from last uh, to first for that guy. But um, I'm still very happy with the way I drove that race, fourth to second. This was a really good battle. The way that this race turned out with the strategy, with the tyres, with the amount of laps is, is really good. But I do hope you've enjoyed the video. Let me know your thoughts. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for making it this far into the video. I'll see you next time. Have a nice day. Goodbye.